Hey everybody, welcome back to FBS episode 7. Um, here today with Course Trick Toaster and B Swegglehausen. Hi. <laughs> oh, hello. We, we'll get it someday. That's the, that's the cue. Yeah, that's definitely the cue. <laughs> Okay. So, <laughs> so today we are doing some terminal work. This is kind of the, is this the, this is the first time, right? Since we, we, we haven't really touched any of the yeah. terminals besides but just like this... we laid out the basic buildings, but we really didn't get into uh, the jet bridges and adding all the... This the isn't the terminal stuff, though. Right? What is this? Well, this isn't the terminal. You're right. So... Um, we've talked about this a little bit in the past. I feel like um, I feel like we should credit Jay a little bit for this, although I know that, that it's, it's probably been around. Is is this another prop count conversation we're about to have? This is a this is another prop count conversation we're about to have. <laughs> it's actually a very important prop count conversation because we have been approaching the limit. Um, so we need to think very carefully about how we use our props. And the big thing was we didn't want to like construct um i mean what we could easily do in game right is just make what i'm making right now you know the plane stands and stuff with the props and then use move it to copy and paste them around and it'd be really nice because then you could also you know on like an individual case by case basis like adjust them if you need to have like longer or shorter lines and stuff but yep. the problem with that is it just uses a lot of props so what we're doing instead is we're actually creating a building that is literally just a plane stand um, out of props only and it actually saves on a pretty good amount of props because it's, I think it's what, 64 props is the limit mm -hmm. on, on these things. So this is a 64 prop exactly. And then you can see here what I'm doing is I'm just doing some hex editing to remove the restraint where you need to actually connect buildings to uh, roadside. And then if you just go ahead and like disable the entertainment radius and the entertainment values and all those things that you'd, uh, that would attract people, I guess, then the game will treat this as a building that not only doesn't need any services, but doesn't even need to connect to the road. So it's basically just like a prop at this point and you can place it anywhere. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the basic. You'll see this a couple different times. I'm gonna make, I think a, a little, a variety of these. I, I think I made like three or four of the plane stands. I cut out, you know, the work where it was the same. And then um, I also tried to do some different buildings that were like, you know, you can see right here, just like some, uh, some baggage trucks and, and loading and stuff like that. But the, the problem is uh, at, at a certain point, and it, it really depends on like what kind of things you're making, it just starts, like you need to make an, an insane amount of like unique looking little buildings to make it not look too repetitive. And yeah. uh, really the only thing that I could I could make use of was this this these buildings where I have, uh, you know, like these baggage carts because you just have these like all over the place. So it, it kind of makes sense to have little clusters everywhere. But um, later in the episode, I tried doing other stuff like, uh, well, I think I cut it out, but I tried to do, um, you know, parked cars and stuff and little clusters like that. But I was saving on like three or four props per building, which is like useless. And then on top of that, like it was just restricting the, uh, you know, the variety I could have and, and all the props. So, uh, that didn't, can really I ask you something, out. can I ask you something quick? Mm -hmm. Um, how, uh, cause I'm, I'm sure many, many of the people watching this, uh, will be interested in, on, in knowing how to specifically do this uh, process that you're doing right that whole uh hex editing uh is that is there a guide or something that we can link in the description oh yeah so that people can check that out yeah there totally is i will um i will try super hard to remember to link that in the description but <laughs> it is a uh, i'll remind you i'll remind <laughs> all you. right remind me um yeah it's a it's actually i mean if you google like uh steam workshop um no road connection custom asset there's like a steam workshop guide for it um, it's super easy. You can download like literally any hex editor you want. And then what you're really doing is you're going into the .crp file, which is the file that uh, it's like a, an asset file for City Skylines. And, you know, obviously as a binary file, it's all just hex values. So uh, you look at the, the tutorial has this whole like chart and it's all the different things, all the different values you can change and then like what they mean. So there's stuff for like road connections. You can even change all the things you can change in the, the asset creator. So you can go in and like turn off the, uh, um, the what entertainment radius or whatever, or the tourist attraction, mm -hmm. stuff like that. You can turn all those things off and they're literally just hex values. So you just change into the value that you want and the graph will tell you like what each one means. So uh, for road connections, I think there was like um, needs to be placed in water, needs to be placed on the ground, and then needs to be placed by a road. So I just change it to placed on the ground, and then it it treats it like a. I think it. I think it just treats it like any other regular prop, like a you know like a tree or anything. So you can put it pretty much anywhere, which is really awesome. Um, and then once you do that, it's it's super easy. Once you do it the first time, then you kind of get the hang of it. And then 
Um, I would highly recommend though just giving it a try because once you get that first one done, then you can start doing this pretty quickly. Um, and the trick is for one thing, and you guys know this, but I'm just kind of talking to the eye. Like you definitely want to make sure that you disable all your mods before you go into yeah. the asset creator or else everything just gets messed mm -hmm. up. Um, but it's super I'll easy. I'll tell you one thing though that you're not going to like. What? You can leave find it on. I saw you scrolling you through all of those it. looking for individual props. Yeah, and find it actually yeah. works. Yeah. You can find it will still work. I didn't even want to mess around with that because I just wanted to get through it quickly. Like, I didn't want to be sitting there forever. Yeah. Actually, to it out. isn't there just the one mod? Like I think loading screen mod is the one that breaks everything. Um, or there's like a no, very specific mod that breaks everything. There's more though. Yeah, because I think there's something that I know there's a mod that causes like all of the uh, toolbar options to go away, but I don't know which one yes. it is. Maybe that is loading screen huh. mod. Um, but that's the one that like really messes things up. But I mean, just to be safe, what I did is I just removed, I just like disable all and then re-enable yeah. all later. Mm -hmm. So it's super easy. But once you do that, you can really save on props. And it's super big anytime that you have something that's going to be copied a lot that is like less than 64 props or, you know, you can kind of break it down into 64 prop sort of uh, sections. That's really the way to go. So... Um, yep. We definitely took advantage of that this episode, and then I know um, in future episodes we'll we'll utilize it quite a bit because it's becoming increasingly hard to detail this airport with our prop limit. So we need to get creative with how we do things, I guess. Um, this is still pretty creative, so yeah, yeah, thumbs up. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But oh, we should also talk about the um, the the jetways because I think that we are using a variety of jetways at this point in, in like later episodes. But I think. Um, for the for this episode anyway, um, I'm using the prop versions of these, so I'm not using like the prefabs that uh, that come with. So the prefabs basically is just like the entire jetway already built out, and I'm sure yeah. you could prefabs are, are basically the building version of these. Right. So it's like if we had gone to the editor, it's just pre done for you. Right. And honestly, I just I I'm sure that you could do it with the prefabs, um, but it just it seemed really really hard to me to fit in the planes in the right way and have them actually connect with the prefabs because like you'll see yep. when I'm when I'm plopping new stuff aside from the the occasional time where they happen to line up nicely I'm almost always adjusting the distances and and kind of anchoring them around and I'll just use move it to literally like select a whole kind of elbow of the thing and then just rotate it and then realign it with the uh, the joints and it's, it's pretty easy to do but um, I mean all in all it wasn't horrible on the prop count I'm pretty sure that like what do we what do we end up with? I think it was like 800 props for like both terminals and all the jet bridges oh, and yeah. everything. So that's not bad at all. I mean, all things considered. So um, you know, it could have been worse, I guess. And I think it was definitely worth it because it, it definitely adds a lot to the build as opposed to having yeah. you know misaligned jet bridges and stuff that doesn't really connect and all that stuff. So yeah, I and this is just I mean, like layer. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was just gonna say this is just like layer one of the things that we're gonna put down to right. detail, or you're going to put down to, <laughs> to detail this terminal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I decided to start with well. So obviously we have the terminals already laid out, which is nice. Um, I think that was was that UJ that did that that did the terminal buildings and stuff. Uh, I think originally I think it was changed a little bit because I. Forgot I was working with Strict Toaster and built everything slightly off the grid. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe I maybe I remembered I was working and just thought, just like, this anyway. will be hilarious. <laughs> like, let's try to get myself kicked out of this collab. By <laughs> the first thing I do is misalign. Just just do everything you can to uh, trigger that Strict Toaster guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I actually did tweak this terminal quite a bit later on, and it was only because Aww. of spacing. No, no, no. I used the same buildings and the same the same uh, design that you had. I just had to space things out a bit differently. In fact, I think yeah. I cut all that. I cut out the first half of that um, at the beginning of the episode because it was pretty boring. But uh, the, That's what's actually really was no, sorry, Especially, go ahead. It's been really surprising about a lot of this airport stuff to me is just how wrong a lot of my intuitions are for spacing and how big planes are and how much room. Yeah, the same with Like, me, I'll though. assume something, yeah. and then when I go and place, I'm just like, oh, I was completely off, like, not even close. Yeah, it's really hard to get a grasp of like, scale just, for that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and you look, I mean, you look on, even on Google Maps, and it looks like, oh, it's that's nice and tight and small, but you look, and it's just, you place it what looks to be correct in game, and it's just so tiny, like you can't even mm -hmm. fit the littlest business jet through without it smashing its wings on planes parked at the gate or something like that. Right. It's just nuts. Yeah, it's but, uh, anyway. It did take a little bit of, of tweaking to get that sort of figured out, but I think actually this is the point where I'm going to start doing some uh, some work on on the uh, the terminals again. And the main thing was I wanted to get the service roads to line up nicely and and kind of be. Uh, the same distance from the spokes and that was 
surprisingly difficult. I don't really know why. Oh, the other thing was that we had these like hidden pedestrian roads underneath them that I forgot about. That's what I was messing with there. Yeah, um, those get deleted whenever you do something over them too, yeah, which is really bad. Really annoying. So I had to go back and like replace those again. But we have this like whole pedestrian road network underneath all these terminals, which is kind of funny. And it, it, it gets more funny later because when I start tweaking these terminals, we need to have like bridges that go over top. And that's kind of what I'm talking about with this like refactoring of the terminal a little bit. So we'll have like elevated pedestrian roads inside buildings that go over bridges and stuff uh, later on. But the one that you were just uh, detailing there, that's an actual active uh, plane stand, right? It is. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing that's actually a good thing to mention. Um, obviously, every single plane stand here is not functional. Um, in fact, we, we had to cut down on that because, well, for one thing, every single plane stand like in the game, you know, I think it's like even just the international terminal, isn't that literally just like the equivalent of one plane stand or something? Like it, there's like one spot where the planes come in and then leave again. Yeah, in I the think there's one. Yeah, so well, in the in the built-in international is what I meant, like the the game's international terminal. So oh yeah, yeah. yeah so it, so it literally treats it as like one thing. So in the scale and the scope of the game and how many you actually need for planes to be spawning and actually you know having busy planes at each thing, you really need like. A couple at most so i think we tried to do like one or two plane stands that are actually functional at each terminal and then the rest will yeah, be we'll spread them out static quite a bit yeah yeah so that one was functional back there but um yeah and then actually surprisingly they line up pretty well like they actually pull in and they like line up straight on the line since they put it right on the line of the thing and it looks like they actually go up to the gate which is pretty cool so um yeah that was kind of nice to see um but you could see definitely the the hardest part i think with doing these was the the outer, um, like, ter like the outer part of the spokes, I guess. There's like corners. I know um, we'll have to deal with that later as well. But that's when you really need to be able to like extend those jet bridges like way out, and um, mm -hmm. and uh, that's when it would be really hard to use prefabs. Like I have no idea how you do that with prefabs. So. No, it's definitely not a technique you can use everywhere, but it's like for things that are going to be repeated exactly the same a whole bunch, like yeah. those paint lines at the bottom, mm -hmm. then I think, I mean, just the fact that you can do so much detail for 800 props when props are at such a, we'll say price premium almost. Right. Is, <laughs> they really are though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty incredible. And I mean, I think, I think it works really nicely for some things I go and I end up actually making my own buildings i think in the future for a different type of line but it's nice to just place it because this for this map we're not going to get close to the building limit it is mm -hmm. extremely yeah, unlikely no but the prop limit oh definitely probably yeah <laughs> absolutely i would say and like so i think the fact that we have the uh asset editor now for things like even like networks um so i believe you do a network in this too right um oh i do it's yeah. gonna be that's coming yeah. up a little bit later yeah um right now yeah, I'm so just, that's an, oh sorry go ahead finish up I was going to say, it's another great way that we're kind of working on saving props and making sure we don't run into right. any huge substantial prop count problems mm -hmm. because it's it's neat to have this kind of new ability where we can edit networks and edit oh, props so just to, or edit buildings to kind of make it all happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All, all I'm going to say is that for everyone, just wait till the part where he does the new network thing, uh, you know, in the next, uh, in this episode, because it's, it's totally going to be worth the wait. It, it changed the whole yeah. look of this whole place. Like seriously, yeah, totally I'm, I, when I saw screenshots of that, I was like, wow. But yeah, that's, I'm just teasing it. <laughs> Go <laughs> ahead. Yeah. No, it's coming up af after these commercial. Messages. Yeah. After this commercial break. <laughs> No, it's, it's actually so important, though, because like if we didn't have a way to make these service roads that looked like service roads without using props, I mean, the, the prop count would be absurd. There's no way that we could do like prop lines for every single service road. That would be like five to ten thousand props over the whole airport. Easy, like just to have lines everywhere. So yeah. uh, this was and they'd end up ugly and like faceted at the corners and everything. Right, and right. Here's what you talk about the pedestrian bridge, right? Yeah, this is where I had I, no idea this was in here. Yeah, yeah, this this all got kind of squeezed in. And I don't think I, I have not even, seen this. I don't think I showed any of you guys this. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> it was kind of an, like difficult to like align everything because it, I don't know. I just I couldn't find the right point like to keep the everything straight get the pedestrian bridge like right in the middle of the buildings i had to move stuff around a lot but um in the end what i did is i kept the same design that jay had for the most part but um, what i did do is i i left like gaps between so i had like bigger buildings at like kind of the hubs of each spoke 
So, you know, which I kind of I think is pretty normal for most airports. You know, you got to like, have a space for your Hudson News. Of course, of course. Hudson yes. News and all your restaurants and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. So Starbucks. where else are you going to get Chex Mix yeah. before you fly? We're going to get those comfy little <laughs> head pillows, you know, for I need this flights. $9 bag of Chex Mix, please. <laughs> yeah. I'm desperate. Right. So so we got that. And then um, I needed to have bridges between them because we actually need to have service roads that cut um, in between the spokes so that you don't have to literally drive all the way around to do that. So um, that's coming in just a minute. I think I took a little break here because I was uh, I was moving buildings. A and break. I was like, oh, man, now the buildings are like, they're like, you know, clipping it. I, I don't highway. think we allowed you to take breaks. Oh, yeah. No, that was not part of the contract. Uh, it wasn't a break. Um, actually, it was just... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it, I had to make these buildings like fit nicely with the highway and so i used again those little jet bridge things which are turning out to be like really nice just universal like white objects that are nice for buildings like they kind of just fit as trim or anything else i kind of want like more packs like that just like prop packs that are just building trim and like you know a little cement you know like the what are those the the You've been playing too much Planet Coaster. I yeah, know, I was going to say <laughs> Planet <laughs> Coaster. <laughs> but really, I love the I love it like that's the best because then you can, you can It gives you it's like flexible. This. It gives you flexibility to yeah. do crazy things. Yeah. And it makes clipping buildings easier because it looks a lot more natural if you have trim instead of just like glass intersecting for some reason. So uh, yeah, but anyway, these are the little bridges that I made and they actually do nice. walk across them, which is super cool. Oh yeah, move it for oh, some Oh, that that thing that? with a glass. <laughs> yep. Yes, I noticed insane. that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you uh, for you guys who don't know what's going on, um, if you if you plop a building and then you try to move it, it's fine. But the second you try and cop a, a copy a building that has been elevated or moved, all the glass like doesn't retain well, the height for some reason. Snap to the floor. Yeah. yeah. So you have to. You see me figuring this out right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? Why can't I just do this? So you have to plot them both and then elevate them, but it's not a big deal in the end. So you'll see that in a future episode of mine, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say you already saw it in an episode of mine. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's uh, it's super cool because these these bridges are glass, so you can actually see people walking across them, like whenever they leave the tr- the you know the terminal, which is pretty cool. So. All right, I better see that in a cinematic attached to the end of this video. <laughs> that sounds super cool. I haven't looked at yeah, it. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see because the glass is super dark. I wish it was like not as dark. Oh. I actually tried to. I that's what I was actually trying to do when I figured out that you could like mess with the glass. I was wondering if you could lower it and then copy it, and the glass would be like underground, but it just always goes to ground level, so it doesn't actually hmm. go underground. But if it did, then I could have no glass there, and it'd be like structs, and then you could actually see him walking easier. But Anyway, that's, I'm getting way too into that. Those <laughs> looking looking at all of this uh, work that you're doing, and me having seen sort of like screenshots of the final result and all, I wonder how much footage you actually are not including on this time lapse. Yeah, this this one this, this episode <laughs> took me a lot. Uh, I, this, this probably is the one that I spent the most time on so far. Actually, it most definitely is. Um, I cut out a lot of the uh, like I, I tried to show a decent amount of me you know, putting these planes in and like the critical areas, like these corners and stuff. But um, doing it for every single plane did take a super long time. And I cut out yeah. most of that. Um, yeah. And then I, I think I cut out a lot at the end too, because there was a lot of like repetitive uh, adding of decals and all that good stuff at the end. But um, I feel like we each, each of us has, have to do that to some degree uh, yeah. on every episode, but it's, it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Totally worth it. Yeah, makes it. Also, yeah, we have no choice. <laughs> yeah, we do have no yeah. choice. That's one one slight downside of such a huge scale build where it's like, oh, this airport's gonna have like more than a hundred gates at the end, yeah. right? Yeah, we did so the I'm math. Like, I think right? we counted that. Yeah. yeah, and that's like, I mean, answer in the comments, I guess. But you guys don't want to see a, a manually building and tweaking a hundred gates, right? Yeah, and you, I mean, you, I feel, like, you I feel like that'd be awful. I don't want to do commentary for a hundred gates. Yeah, I don't know what I would say for a hundred gates. I mean, you can see like how long it takes to align them, and then like move all of the props, and then like line it up. That's like, yeah, do that a hundred times at least, and then. And here, here I am doing the same thing again for gate seventy-eight. <laughs> and here we go. I'm aligning the props for gate seventy-nine. No, actually, you're wrong. Seventy-eight uh, A. And then you have seventy-eight B. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. Yeah, well, actually, here, so I go back now to gate 54 because I realized <laughs> that with 76, I wanted to cut. No, it just wouldn't work that way. Yeah. I did have some weird gates like this, though, that, like, come out of the main building. Ooh. I just thought it was, like, it, it didn't make any sense to have that one go inverse, like, back into it again. So I have a few of those little, like, interesting gates. I always love that, though. Like, I feel like that's pretty common at a lot of airports. I know. I, I, um, I think I talked to airport. Jay about 
those kinds of gates uh, before and how I wanted the service road to sort of go underneath uh, mm -hmm. some of these uh, jet mm -hmm. bridges. So yeah, right. more more of those, please. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I just uh, yeah, it's always <laughs> that weird gate like when you come into the terminal that's just like in the main area for some reason. Like it's not like in the yeah. other areas. So I, I figured that would be kind of fitting as well. And I mean, I think it, it definitely fits here too because this is one of the, at least I imagine. So let's. Uh, Hopefully you're building this off of my my secret plans <laughs> I've never told you about. But this is one of the oldest <laughs> oldest terminals uh, in my head, one of the older ones. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that they've like put new gates in just to try and squeeze a couple extra planes or something like that. Yeah, it's at a, some point and like yeah, it's, yeah, it's I, not quite as clean and organized. All right, you can go this time. <laughs> I was gonna say I'd say Jay's like our official airport lore master, like the uh, the guy who's mm -hmm. he's come up with all of the um, the the lore behind our airport. I um, I just try and follow I, fo I I try and follow as close as I can. Actually, I didn't. I was I was really hoping I didn't mess something up with this one because um, when I was plopping all these plane stands, I I realized this afterwards that I literally just picked like a random airplane and then put it in there and based the jet bridges or the the um, whatever you call them the plane stands like the markings off of that and I didn't even like think about the size of the plane at all. Luckily, it was like a regional jet, and I think we were going to make yep. this domestic. So we got super lucky there. Like, if I would have grabbed like a jumbo jet or like a, you know, anything else, then we probably would have had really weird looking terminal with uh, the wrong sized plane stands. So also, <laughs> uh, it's, it's worth noting that uh, not all plane stands will actually have planes parked in. Like, that's, right. that would oh, be yeah. a bit this unrealistic. Just, uh, so we're just like, I'm, I'm sure you're just measuring, uh, using to, to measure things. Right. That's uh, exactly what I did. Yeah. I And the main thing was I knew that when we get into, so this is like, a, as we're, we were talking about this earlier, it's a, it's a very phase oriented building workflow. So we start off with like, Put the terminals down, then put the service roads down, and then do all the plane stands with the planes in them, and then go back and do some of the flooring so we kind of know how far out you know other props should go, and then go back and do the props, and then go back and, and actually remove the planes and, and level it up. But keeping the planes in there just meant that I could know like if we were gonna have you know service vehicles like maybe delivering the food for the you know the whatever you call them, flight attendants or something, then we would need to have the planes there. <laughs> so you could like know, you know, where to put those things. So yeah, I kept the airplane planes people. Now. The airplane people, yeah, airplane those people. people. So so that's that's why I kept the planes there, but they're all gonna go away. In fact, I don't think we're gonna have any of those green airplanes in this, in this uh, terminal at all. Uh, or are we? I don't know, actually, that's a good question. I have no idea. Oh. I, it's I, according, the, the signs at the front of the airport say, and literally, I don't remember beyond that. So I think, I think after this, I went through when I first got the safe, you're just like, hey, swap these just to make sure they're right. Mm -hmm. And I think I did that. And you probably see that in the next episode. Right. But I, I literally go back and forth to the signs at the front of the airport checking yeah. what, what planes should go at what gates. It was really confusing because all the off ramps like they come before the terminal make it really hard to know like like which one it goes where because they kind of interweave at one point so like if you're driving you would obviously yeah. go to the right terminal <laughs> yeah it us, makes sense if you're driving yeah but for us we're like what the heck like which one is it so i think i even like used the wrong one initially but i mean at this point i actually wasn't worried about putting planes down in fact i don't even know if the end of this episode i'm gonna have a whole lot of planes in the in the the terminal in general i'll probably put them in for the cinematics but um yeah. Another thing that's worth noting is that uh, apparently you guys, I don't, I don't think I have done this yet, but you guys are using the field, the empty field as a toolbar for oh, yeah. that's the exactly staging of the props. <laughs> oh yeah, can I, can I mention yes. this real quick? Because yeah, yeah. this is terrible. Mm -hmm. um, so what you're seeing me do right now, you're, you're noticing that I'm putting a building on top of the existing building. So this was, this was awful. This was just, it just, this was such a pain to fix, but apparently, um, so obviously those, those like, I think they're docks actually is what those those like concrete slabs yeah. are. Um, oh, I know where they, this is going. Yeah, so they work with they they allow decals on them. So the decals look awesome. But the problem is in my in my original building design, the uh, the like whatever you call that. What's that called again? The plane like stop the bar. stop bar. There you go. The stop bar is not a prop, and it was lowered just low enough that it would like flicker and glitch around on those uh, the cement slabs. So I had to go back manually, make a new building, and then copy it over the old buildings. And then I just like reloaded the game and deleted those assets locally so they would disappear, the old ones. And then, yeah, anyway, that's what happened. That's why I was doing that. <laughs> 
but thank god i was i was ready for you to be like and i manually had to go and delete this mic you could have just uninstalled yeah i know i just uninstalled it so that was fine yeah that's um so wow so, you're actually and, going under the freeway there i am yeah so this was this was kind of the point where i wanted to get going on the service roads a little more and uh, get this figured out so i didn't really like um well obviously we're gonna have real service roads in a little while that are that are not asphalt they're just gonna be like painting you know painted lines but uh, for the parts that are asphalt i wanted to have kind of like an inner like asphalt area so that's what that was all about um i think i think it looks a little better to have some variety of 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 textures because right now it was like all concrete and it was a little boring so you'll see that later on i didn't really show it very well but there'll definitely be um, lots of variety in the in the textures and stuff now this is when we decided to use the network editor to create a uh custom surface roads and this yes. is my first time ever doing this so be prepared i think i actually cut out a lot of this because I, I i went in and out of this so many times trying to find a better alternative i thought like Maybe I could like use other road types or like I could just make it white enough that it would look like the asphalt is uh, concrete. But then it turns out that no, that's not how it works because it just takes over the color that our road color changer uses no matter what. So I can't use any asphalt at all for this. And then great, um, great like, choice of uh, LUT, by the way, for this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Wait, can you even can you even add a LUT to this at all? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Oh. But it's I, I always uninstall mine. So it's like. I, I have no idea how these assets look until they're in game. Like not even the asset. I'm like, this looks like garbage. And I'll load it and I'm like, no, that looks great actually. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you, that you I, can go you into like the graphic settings here. and change it, but not yeah. in, not any more than that. I don't think. Yeah, no, I I just like I didn't I don't never even do anything with that. I just was messing around. But anyway, this is where we really got into it. Um, and when I finally figured out how to make this work, so what I did is I actually disabled all markings on the road, and I think I used like a standard two lane road. So none of this stuff is like being generated from markings. What you can do is in the networks editor, you can add like repeating props. So I just have like repeating lines on the left and then on the right lane and then like a center dotted line. Now this was tricky. So there is a prop limit per network segment. So the longer- <sighs> Also a prop <laughs> limit there? <laughs> yeah, Man. so the, the longer segments can't have too many props. And as you can see, there's like gaps because I'm hitting the prop limit before I get to the end. So I had to like use different length. Um, oh, this was so annoying. It takes so long to load all the props with the oh, asset God, editor. Yeah, I was just sitting there like waiting for that thing. This is sped up like 10 times speed. And I'm just sitting here waiting yeah, for it I to feel load. Like it's, I feel like it's slow oh, even sped up. It was so slow. Um, but anyway, yeah. I feel your pain. I, I used the longer longer ones and then I um, you know, increased the distance and that fixed all that. So here we go, finally adding them all in. And it was so satisfying to see all those nice. asphalt roads go away because they just looked really weird, you know, in there with all the concrete. So I think it really made a big difference. Obviously, the only issue is since I'm using props that are like associated with the road lanes, any uh, intersection like this you can see is not lined or marked. Um, and you would have to actually upload like a custom mesh for the nodes or something like that. I don't even know how it works, but I, I couldn't. Um, do that. So I just decided to leave them blank and then go ahead and use the uh, the lines to do that with the, the props. And and I also lower them a bit so that they match the same sort of, uh, you know, color. That's a great technique, actually. Yeah. yeah. It's super, yeah. super useful. And we use that a lot in other areas, too, when we're doing the uh, the markings for the taxis. Yeah, the taxis and stuff like that. So uh, that's a very useful technique. And there was, oh, what was the, um, do you remember the issue we had with that earlier where we couldn't lower... Um, the decals for some reason it was like what was that uh, yes i remember that but i don't remember exactly what, yeah, what was the it. fix oh i was about to like let you all in on some <sighs> knowledge about how to fix that because i i know i've even gotten questions about this like you know i have move it and for some reason none of my props um you know they all like just default back to the same height like what's going on and wasn't it like prop it up or something i don't think it was actually prop it up that's oh I yeah, it yeah yeah it was yeah i think i think it was the prop snapping, snapping probably. Oh, yeah. prop snapping. Yeah, because I think it just snaps the uh, the props back to the ground level whenever you try and do that. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. decals. So yeah, I think if you turn prop snapping off, it fixes that. I'm not quite sure. I don't take my word for it, but Tr try a few of the prop mods and it will work. Yeah, but it works. That's it does work. You can actually do this, and it's and it's super useful. So highly recommended. Um, I did mark a lot of these, but I didn't mark all of them, just the ones that went to kind of this general terminal area. So we'll have to go back and do that for other ones later on. But um, here I, 
I intentionally designed these plane stands to only have like a certain reach, and then I was gonna do the rest of the lines myself because I, some of them are gonna be like right up against the, uh, uh, you know, the little service road, and other ones don't. But one thing that I noticed is that all of these, uh, it seems like almost every airport will have all the lines kind of get intersected by the service road, and that's like kind of the the great equalizer, you know, the thing that sort of cleans everything up because the lines are just like a total mess in the inner area where all the all the you know the plane stands are like all misaligned and and weird and they just seem to do that to get them you know more optimally squeezed in so at the end of the day there's always a service road that kind of runs around the outside of all of them and that's where you would uh, kind of move the lines to so i would like i would like to comment on this curvy lines which i know they're like totally accurate but they my ocd can't deal with the fact that that you know how like the <laughs> curve doesn't flow perfectly out of the right. It's just, ah. Uh, I know what you're talking. I know about. it's like the and turning. It's a turning uh, thing for the wheels, but man. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. it's because you're supposed to trace that with the nose wheel, and then yeah. the back of the plane will follow perfectly. But it, mm -hmm. it, like, I was just, I was looking, I was searching all over the country, all over the world, for an airport that does them more smoothly. I'm like, please, yeah. just let please, me do somebody it neatly has and it. nicely. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I did want to do the same thing, I'm, and but this is actually I'm glad why I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah, no, this is why we didn't. Um, we did make a building out of these because they're all different. And, and I kind of, I actually just ended up looking into it more and then kind of reading about it a little bit. Cause I was like, why are all of these so like weirdly not aligned? And it seems like there's like a specific angle that the, that the marking needs to be coming out of the, the plane stopper. And then another specific angle where it intersects with the jet, the, you know, the taxiway, I guess. Um, so pretty much all of them are going to look different and the angles are different going into the stopper and going into the taxiway. So it just looks misaligned and weird, but that's just kind of how they are. And if you look them up like anywhere, it's the same way. Like the hobby's weird, you know, non-symmetrical oval shaped things and all that stuff. So it does, it, it, it is uh, quite remarkable how even as you add those lines and they're like really bright, but the moment you lower them down and you just lower the opacity, mm -hmm. they just blend in so oh, perfectly yeah. that it's like, it's mm -hmm. like, yes, this is it. Like yeah. no more touches here. Yeah, I love that, I, and I'm really glad that you came up with it because I think you were the one who first did that with uh, when you were doing the the taxiway. Yeah, I struggled with that a bit. Yeah, that was like that was the perfect solution because there's like no line in existence on the workshop that is the right color. So this is like perfect. This works really well. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, now we're getting into the props, um, and again, we're kind of working in phases here. So I decided to start with the uh, the baggage and kind of the the heavier props that are going to be clustered all over the place. Um, I tried to keep the repetition down. Um, so there is this one here that has a little baggage loader on it. And then I had some other ones that don't have baggage loaders and I kind of combine them later on and that uh, sort of breaks it up a little bit. But um, these props are just really nice for buildings in general because they actually do all look the same and they're actually just tight little dense clusters. You're not gonna see these things like scattered mm -hmm. around because that's just like, you know, messy. Like they actually do cluster them. So that works really well, but when it comes to other things, it just wasn't a lot else you could do with the buildings. So, uh, yeah, mostly just these for the buildings, and then we'll get into some other stuff. Um, I tried to have a few of these areas like this where the uh, the you know the service road kind of comes in, because um, I noticed that happens here and there. So we've got this like once or twice, and I'm just kind of aligning different things here and there to get it to actually look nice, but. Um, I did want to, I think, eventually come back to maybe all the terminals at some point. And uh, when we think more about, I don't think I added any of the, uh, um, the, the fueling trucks or anything like that yet. And I think mm -hmm. we were going to do like a fueling station at some point. So maybe we'll, we'll think about that then. There are a few like, like specific unique things that, that wouldn't be scattered everywhere that we'll probably think yeah. about later, but this is just like a general purpose. So you know, a general purpose pass with all the things that are going to be in every single terminal. So um, that's what we're doing. So now. And a, a lot of those kind of really unique details are going to depend on when we get our final type of airplane and size in right. there. Because it would be really silly to like quickly and come with this beautiful, very careful thing for baggage loaders and stairs and a food car or a food truck or whatever all at one mm -hmm. uh, plane and then be like, oh, actually, I want a bigger airplane at this gate. Let's right. start from scratch. Yeah, exactly. So it's made a lot of sense to uh, to kind of skip that one until I finish up with all my airplanes, at least. Right, yeah. Or we could finalize in some way. That's a good call. Yeah. So, and then the other thing that kind of surprised me, I always just kind of like, maybe it's just one of those things when you're flying on an airplane and you kind of look out the window, you just kind of like 
you kind of get, you know, you imagine in your head like what you think an airport should look like, but when you actually go and look at it again, um, like I did, you know, looking on maps, I didn't realize that like literally all the way along each spoke, there's just like parking lot, there's parking spots and there's just cars, like vehicles all the way along the lines everywhere, which is really weird. But I guess there's just a lot of vehicles on the ground, typically like trucks and vans and stuff like that. So um, I did add parking lot, you know, parking spots all the way along the edges there. And there's then... uh, there's quite a bit of variety from vehicles from the airlines themselves, plus, you mm -hmm. know, Homeland Security, mm -hmm. just airport police and even right. fire trucks. Yeah, ambulances so, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. That's My true. favorite is that some airports now to get people in like first class to easier easily make their connections have like porsches what <laughs> that I literally yeah yes. and you'll climb up the stairs on the jet bridge get into the back of this porsche and then get like sped along the ramp to your other gate and you just no walk way. up and sit down in your other first class seat yeah it's crazy i feel like that's got to be so, like a status someday and like a than like a practical like we need to go <laughs> 200 miles an hour to get from gate a to gate b like <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure whenever you're taxiing, it's like, oh, actually, we're gonna be at another gate. I'm like almost certain that that's because there's somebody who won't make a connection otherwise, and they're of a certain status. Yeah, they just changed the plane, which is not your status usually. Which is not <laughs> no. I mean, uh, in yours and or mine for that matter. I mean, yeah. that's what I meant. Well, that's my status. <laughs> I used you to. Know. <laughs> they, they stop planes for Flying me. Around. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm late, they just stop it for me. You're you're the popular YouTuber here, uh, so that makes sense. <laughs> I used to have airline status, but it expired this year. And I feel like such an idiot flying around without my priority. Wow. Or whatever. Wow. What a, yeah. Yeah. Like what a, a peasant. Back down with all you. I was going to say with you peasants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back in the long lines and having to wait to get on the plane. And, ugh. But like everybody else. The only else. ones had that status, but not like a Porsche Everybody status. else. No, I, I would. Trust me. I am hundreds of thousands of miles away from Porsche status. <laughs> I'm not even at free upgrade status. They try and charge me for those. I'm like, huh? I'm at like budget Excuse airline me. status. <laughs> like standby status. <laughs> well, at least you get to be on a plane. That's already an yeah, amazing experience true. in and of that's itself. True. It is quite Yeah, amazing. look at us complaining about being able to get anywhere in the world within 24 hours. No, I, I, I love going to the airport. Like every time. I never me get too. sick of it. Like me I know too. people who hate flying, but I always love flying like i i, yeah. I don't know it's it's such a cool it's the same thing i don't get it like i'll i'll go to airports and I'm like oh no i've got a four hour layover at the airport oh well yeah like, it's still fun yeah, you get to hang out at an airport and like you can get some work done or you know whatever look at all these airplanes yeah. look at planes for the most part yeah anyway we are actually getting really close to the end of this episode so we should probably wrap it up thank god here. it's been such a long episode <laughs> <laughs> so many I, you know what? i can tell you this we're going to have to do this like way more, but we're probably not going to include it that much in the episodes. I think we'll probably end up like cutting a lot more of this out now that we've shown it a few times. I mean, I know we'll have a few different, like I know the next episode we're talking about doing like a, you know, more international type jumbo jet plane. So I'll probably, you know, show that kind of stuff too, but um, I'm sure we'll start cutting back on, on things we've already done. Cause that is sort of what's going to happen with these, uh, these episodes after a while, because you know, there's going to be parts of the airport that just need to be repeated. So we'll, try and cut that stuff out as much as possible keep them interesting but fantastic yep i think all that's right. it so thank you all for watching uh be sure to check by on beast wigglehausen's channel for the next episode uh and as always thanks for watching and we'll see you next time goodbye <laughs>